All right, welcome back to Reimagine 2020, Volume 5, underway here, wrapping up towards the end of the year, uh, starting to have some of those important conversations about what 2020 actually meant for the crypto space and wider financial markets, hell, maybe even life as a whole, and what 2021 may even begin to look like. I'm joined now by David Gokstein, uh, founder of Gokstein Media, uh, uh, you know, pioneer in the, in the space of crypto, uh, an entrepreneur at his core, who's here to join us and talk a little bit about his views of the year that was and the year that will be. David, firstly, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for getting my last name right. I <laughs> also appreciate that. Hey, we take that extra effort here at Reimagine to try and make sure we're, we're on top and on point. Um, all right, David, so let's kick things off here. Uh, you know, here we stand at the end of 2020. It's a question I've been asking a lot of, a lot of guests uh, in this conference, and I think it's, it's really relevant. You know, we're in December, we're in the, the final stretch, and you know, this question gets asked every year, but I think in 2020, it's more relevant than ever. What's your takeaway from this year? What, what, what lessons, what trends, what ideas can be learned from this chaotic year that uh, we've all, I don't know, maybe suffered through, maybe thrived in? Uh, what's your takeaway? That nothing is predictable. Um, this year has been crazy. Uh, and I, I put that, I guess, uh, very conservatively. Um, I mean, for the crypto space, forget about COVID. Let's talk about the crypto space, I guess. Uh, digital assets and blockchain itself. I think it's been a really productive year. I think we've done a lot of good things. I think uh, we've accelerated uh, the process of um, bringing people into this space and having you know this bull market come out now, whereas I thought it would uh, come out around quarter one or quarter two of 2021. So for the crypto market itself, it's been a hell of a good year because people got to sit back and think about where's all this money coming from, you know, especially in the States, how are they printing all this money? How are they able to do this? And I think that has had a huge effect on people coming into crypto and kind of asking what is Bitcoin? What are digital assets and so forth? As for COVID, I mean, we already know we're locked down. I'm in New York City. I can't, you know, go anywhere. Uh, if I breathe wrong, I might get fined. So um, that's been hellacious. And, uh, you know, I had uh, a personal tragedy. So, you know, 2020 has been good, but it's also been horrific from a personal I'm, standpoint. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, sad to hear about your, your personal sufferings. I'm really sorry to hear uh you know that you know it's been such a tough year for so many it's it's sort of interesting to question it and stare down the barrel of this of this year so then you know uh based you know i'm, I'm particularly interested in hearing from your perspective as a you know based there in new york in the center of you know what is traditionally the center of global finance but you know at, at an interesting time such as this are there any particular trends that you're noticing in the financial space either mainstream you know wall street or uh, the crypto space uh, that you think uh, are particularly interesting to watch or that people should be paying attention to? The biggest thing that you see in 2020 is you you now see, you know, right now, this is all institutional buying. If we're looking at everything that's going on in crypto, most of this is just institutions coming in and buying up Bitcoin, which is great. It, it's It's what we wanted in 2017. 2017, obviously, to me, was more retail driven than it was institutional driven. 2020, end of 2020, you have institutions coming in and buying everything up. You have PayPal, you know, while people were screaming about, you know, PayPal, I don't want PayPal in here. People don't recognize the number of 357 million users being able to come and either buy or sell their cryptocurrency. If we can get 1% of that retail market into this space, it's a beautiful thing. We go from a trillion dollars to $3 trillion in terms of market cap. Uh, but I've seen in New York, obviously, the, you know, the center of, you know, you got Wall Street here. Everybody on Wall Street is talking about, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. It's no longer gold. No disrespect to gold, but it's, the talk is now, how do we get into Bitcoin? And that's, uh, you know, thankfully I have the opportunity to speak to people in Wall Street. And that's, 
everything that I'm gauging is how do we get into Bitcoin? How do we hedge against Bitcoin? And that's been a, you know, a huge thing. And that's what we wanted. I mean, the whole space wanted institution money, institutional money. We've got it. Not everything yet, but we've, we've got a good amount of it in. Right. Certainly so. I mean, you know, it seems to be a, a tipping point in the second half of this year that's uh, really brought that institutional money in. So then I guess looking forward, let's let's switch in perspectives. Let's look ahead to 2021, you know, leave the dust of 2020 behind us. You know, there's a, a potential, these potential vaccines, uh, you know, just on the, on the horizon. Maybe we're all uh, going to make it uh, through this after all and come out on the other side uh, better and stronger for a consequence. I don't know. Let's uh, but taking a look at the future, you know, as, a, as an entrepreneur yourself and as an entrepreneurial minded individual, you know, what are you looking out for? Is there, is there some, some ladder in this chaos that can be climbed? Is there something that you think is, a, is an industry, a trend, a, a business or even an individual to particularly look out for in the year ahead? Well, we're talking about, if we're going to talk about vaccines, I, I'm not, uh, I'm no, not no, a no. fan. No, 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 I mean the financial. Oh, yeah, yeah I financially wise. I mean, there's, look, there's opportunities everywhere right now in the blockchain space for somebody. I'm going to talk about specifically the blockchain space. There's an opportunity for businesses to come into the blockchain space and they can really utilize blockchain to pick up their ROIs. But education is needed. Like there's not enough education out there for these small, even small businesses to understand what blockchain is. And that's who we need to attack. It's a small business. It's not the corporations. We need to go after the small businesses because small business runs America. And I'm, I'm going to speak for, you know, the United States here. Small business sure. runs, you know, the United States of America. So we need to get these small businesses to understand how blockchain can benefit them. So let's say hypothetically, we, I know it's not a small business. Let's take, let's take um, Louis Vuitton, hypothetically okay. speaking, right? Sure. Louis Vuitton loses a bunch of money yearly because of knockoffs, right? But if we can go ahead and put Louis Vuitton on blockchain, not only do we save them money from bootleggers, but they earn more ROI because now people know that that literally came from Louis Vuitton. So I, I, I said in the beginning, we need to focus on small business. I just wanted to make an example with, you know, Louis Vuitton, but we can sure, put sure. everything, just even meat markets, you know, small meat markets out in Idaho. We can put, you know, that on blockchain. So we know where our meat came from. So that essentially 2021, there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of businesses to make a lot of money by integrating blockchain into their daily lives, as I would put it. Yeah, I, I think definitely. And I think, you know, you raised a good point there. Everything starts with education. You know, everything starts with this, this idea that we need to, you know, get more people aware and more people on board. And I suppose it's always interesting to hear how people became aware of the crypto space or got into the crypto space. So if you don't mind sharing with us, you know, could you tell us a little bit about your personal story uh, with crypto and how you, how you got into this world? So I heard about Bitcoin and uh, I heard about Bitcoin and I guess like everybody else, I want to say 09, I probably heard about it in 2011. Um, my friend was big on it. He was like, you got to get in. This is the next thing. I'm like, uh, go, go have some fun. I'm not interested. And that's that brutally honest. Uh, he hands yeah. me, uh, he hands me some free Bitcoin. And uh, I was, I was like, okay, I'm not going to throw it out, whatever. And 2013 is 14. I start, I'm more interested in blockchain than I am in Bitcoin. So I start, you know, diving into blockchain. And then uh, in that year, at close to the end of that year, I'm into Bitcoin now. I'm into all and every other cryptocurrency that's currently out there. And that's it. I, I, I fall in love with it. I'm like, this is the next big thing. I, I believe from 2015, my, in my mind, I was like, this is digital gold. This is, the, you know, I, I didn't. I now firmly believe that Bitcoin is not going to be the goal, the global currency, but I do believe that it's a great store of value, and it will eventually replace gold as that digital gold. That's really that's that's really how it came in. For sure, uh, and it sounds like a you know a, a, at the same time a classic and yet also a, a unique uh, sort of journey. You know, for those in the crypto space. 
uh, who, who sort of came in so many ways through word of mouth, through hearing the, the right name and the right, the right time and the right place. And often, as you say, that, that missed opportunity where, you know, we didn't throw all our money in back in uh, the early 2010s. And teens I'm, an and, uh, you know. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm I just, I no, but it's like, you know, like my, my mom and my uncle are computer programmers. So yeah, I'm in blockchain. I'm interested in blockchain. I think blockchain can, re you know, can bring back trust. You know, blockchain, what it does is bring back trust. So when I say that, I'll use an example like banks, right? It brings back trust between me and the banks because now I see where my money's going. Um, but like being that I was in blockchain, I'm like, man, I'm kicking myself. Why didn't I get more Bitcoin? Like I could have just a hundred dollars could have, you know, go ahead and just look at, you know, a hundred dollars at 2000 in 2014 what it would have looked like to have how much Bitcoin I would have gotten and what, have, what the price or what the amount I would have had on my ledger right now. And I kick myself, I kick myself, I kick myself, but I also did the same shit, excuse my language, uh, in the dot-com era when my uncle was begging me to buy, you know, domain names. And I was like, go away with this whole, you know, buying domains thing. <laughs> I'm on AOL with the free CDs going on to AOL, trying to get into, you know, the Italian chat room. Uh, I don't really care about domain <laughs> names there. I, I'm thinking about, you know, how I can go ahead and take out a girl here and, you know, and this is way before selfies, so. Right, exactly. And, and you know what, like it's, it, 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 everyone loves to be, you know, on the cutting edge of that innovation that works and that, you know, that, that innovation that really came good. But, you know, how many times has, has your, your crazy uncle or your, your mad friend who's like spent too much time sitting in some chat room somewhere came up and said, here's this thing you should invest in. And it turns out to be nothing. It turns out to be a, a whole lot of crap. So, you know, we can't all have, have the eagle eye out there. There's, there's got to be plenty I think, of opportunities. I think if somebody's harping and they're harping and harping and harping on it, and then, you know, my friend is pretty intelligent and sometimes mm -hmm. it's just, okay. Let me take, you know, a few dollars here and throw it at it. I keep, you know, I'm not making that mistake again, period. If I have right. somebody that comes to me with an idea, okay, let me thoroughly look through this and not just brush it away. That was my fault. So, All right. so is that, that's an interesting question. That's something I always think about. Like, has this, has this opened your mind? Like, has the whole crypto experience so far or kind of opened your mind to, to being more suggestible to the weird and the wacky and the out there, like, I mean, are you now going to like chase down all these projects in the hope they're the next Bitcoin? Are you going to like, or at least do some reading into it? I don't know. Like, how's your view being shaped by the I last guess, you know, half decade or so? I, I guess I'll say that now it's more like, I guess, maturity. You know, I'm 39 years old. So maturity plays into it, you know, experience. And, you know, if you're not learning, you're not growing, as they say. And for me, you know, I will thoroughly look through every project, which I do. I look through projects. If I read right into the first page that it's boring, I'm throwing it out. But like, I will look into every single project to try to find, I don't want to say the next Bitcoin, but the next opportunity. Because I don't think there's going to be the next Bitcoin per se, because Bitcoin is Bitcoin. It's, it, it wasn't the, fisc, uh, the first cryptocurrency, but it was the cryptocurrency that went ahead and allowed the mass public to go ahead and understand who we are. So that in itself will always have the place as like, I, I go back to it, great store of value and people will recognize it as digital gold. I'm looking for that cryptocurrency that did the same numbers as XVG did Verge uh, did in 2016, where you could have took $66 guys, $66, <laughs> put it into, okay, bought, Verge for $66 and by its all time high, I think it was a uh, 28 cents, you would have been a millionaire. So $66 would have turned into a million dollars. That's what I'm looking <laughs> for. And that's why I'm constantly harping on passive income. And what also to quickly answer your question, this whole space gave me the opportunity to free my mind. Think the yeah. matrix you know, where, you know, you're stuck, you're working, you're constantly working, you're making great money, but you're not happy. In this space, I am truly happy. And I, I, I literally found myself. All right. And that's such a powerful thing. And I think, you know, I think that's a story of many in this space who finally felt like this was an opportunity to break out from the, 
you know, the drudgery of the, the nine to five work, working place where you feel like you're always working for someone else's buck, always earning someone else a bunch of money. And here's a place for independence. So, you know, but like looking at current sort of cutting edge projects, you know, let's look at the DeFi space or, or something like that. I mean, are you, are you bang on into that? Are you looking into DeFi? Are you worried about scams there? Do you think that that's the, truly the next growth industry or, or is there something else you're looking at? Well, when people say DeFi, we already had DeFi. So, you know, what is Bitcoin? It's decentralized finance, right? You're, you're unbanking yourself. You are now in control of your money, which is one major thing that, you know, appeals to me and should appeal to the rest of the public is that you control your own money. You know, you give your money away to the bank. They're charging you to go ahead and hold it. I mean, and they're using your money to make money on it. You're not making money on your money with you know bitcoin and all these other digital assets you have the opportunity to make some gains to gain some interest and this new DeFi space listen there's a lot of you know there's a lot of projects that are real you know and i would say that's about two percent the rest of it is all crap i mean it, it really is all crap and they'll all be gone within the next six months but you know what we need these projects to understand you know, even though they'll be gone, most of them, I believe, we need these projects to understand how to make DeFi work and how to make it work better. So right now we're at the start. We have some great, you know, projects out there, but 98% of the spaces will be gone. Like, the, I mean, they're all the same. If we all look at them, they're all the same project with a different name. So, and they've been made, literally, there's probably one being made right now uh, or was made five minutes ago that's on Uniswap right now, telling you it's the biggest thing that's coming, yet you know somebody else has the same exact technology running. Right, certainly. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a rat race at the moment. So many people jumping in. And as you say, with those big institutions coming into play uh, now, like uh, with that, all that money starting to bleed in, it's only going to sort of make it that much crazier, right? I mean, do you think there's any chance that this space is going to settle down soon or are we headed for the... The dot com bubble kind of burst. Uh, at some I point. don't think the bubble is gone. I don't believe we should even talk about bubbles because 2017 was the bubble. So I, I, because we didn't have institutional money, like we really didn't have that institutional money. We wanted it, but we didn't have it. If there was institutional mm. money, it was maybe 10%. This whole run with Bitcoin, this is not retail money. I, most of it is not, I would say maybe 10% of it, maybe 15% is right. retail money. Every, you have all these big companies now. Pay, let's go back to PayPal. PayPal jumps in. You know, they're buying up. What happens when Amazon and Apple and Google jump in? You think they're not ready? Oh, they're, if, they, if they aren't already in. So I don't believe there's going to be a bubble. I, I think, you know, Bitcoin is just so set up. It's so scarce that people are going to just want it and they're going to want to own a piece of it. And that's what makes it so special, but I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. Uh, I see potential in other, you know, cryptocurrencies or other digital assets. Mm -hmm. So there's room for everybody. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, if there's not enough, you know, if people don't like Bitcoin, you'll have institutions, which there already are jump into XRP uh, to go ahead right. and use XRP as their store of value. And a lot of people don't talk about that and they'll call me an XRP fanboy. But all I'm saying is <laughs> XRP can be used as a store of value. And I am more than yeah, happy yeah, well, to debate anybody on that. Yeah, we're we're, we're uh, coin agnostic over here, I, I reimagine. We're not here to shield for anyone in particular. You know, you got a project you love, man, preach it from the, preach it from the streets. We're, 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 pro, we're pro whatever you want to discuss. We have uh, to be right. one. We have to be one. Like, that's the only... Sure. We can't have the whole max you know maxi thing going on bitcoin or nothing else i love bitcoin bitcoin makes up most of my portfolio but you can't have you can't say hey just use this commodore 64 don't use a macbook don't use a dell i mean come on let's be realistic yes bitcoin is great but there's other projects out there like ethereum without ethereum this space would not exist so let's acknowledge ethereum Congratulations to them for the 2.0 launch going off without a hitch. Uh, without them, 95% of these projects don't exist. So uh, everybody can play in this space. Everybody has a place in this space. Let's 
Now get away from crypto Twitter and let's go out there and bring in people that don't understand coding and let's simplify the process so we can have a huge community. Preach, brother, preach. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think this, this tribalism nonsense, it just tears the community apart. Let's get people involved. Let's get those, let's get every engineer, every developer, every, everyone out there, all those great minds working together. It's, uh, you know, it's an exciting time. All right. So in conclusion, let's, uh, let's wrap on the, on the positive note of the 2021. What's your biggest excitement? Like, what are you absolutely, you know, frothing with excitement over uh, in the year ahead? I'm excited that I see um, the space is growing. I'm not looking at crypto Twitter. The space is growing outside of crypto Twitter. When mm -hmm. I get to talk to 50 kids from NYU or from Pace University or from some university out in the Midwest, I'm sorry about this. Uh, Siri feels like joining into the conversation. I don't know if you heard me, but whether, you know, <laughs> she always does. She always does. 50, you know, 50 kids asking uh, that wanted, you know, want answers about cryptocurrency and digital assets and blockchain technology, all these universities that are, are allowing people like me and you to go out there and educate people and then bring them into this space. That's when adoption happens. Right now, I'm all about adoption. I'm, if you see me on Twitter or on social media, I'm giving away free Bitcoin. I can't stand Siri. Uh, Apple, you got to do something about Siri. <laughs> all good, all good. When I go out there, I'm, I'm trying to get these people in. I'm trying to offer up the education, gokshin.com, Gokshin Media. We offer free educational material for people that want to come in and just have everything simplified. The thing, we have trouble with this. We don't simplify things for people. We don't simplify the shit. When people come in here and they see coding, they don't understand it. Nobody understands what C, C++, C++ is. They don't know what Python is. We need to simplify it. So when they read and they understand what Bitcoin does and what ultimately it can do by unbanking somebody and giving them the freedom to control their own money, they understand that. That's ground floor. Now, if they are interested in moving up to stage one, two, three, four, God bless. We have that material. If they don't like our material, they can go visit you. They can reimagine. They can visit whoever they want. But the information right. now, right now that we have out here is great. We have information. We have education out here for those who want it. But it starts out there. Honestly, it starts out there. We need to get out there. We have to hit the streets and we have to tell people and simplify the education for them about cryptocurrency. We bring those people in. We bring the boomers in that are on Facebook. This space starts to grow along with all the institutions that are already jumping in. David, I love your passionate message. Uh, I love your excitement for the space. You know, we need more of this all across the space. And, uh, you know, hopefully with good collaborations, uh, you know, such as this and such as others out there, we'll uh, only get more and more passion and excitement going. David Gopstein, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And for all the audience uh, watching at home, make sure you keep kicking on with Reimagine uh, 5.0. There's so much going on in this conference and so much more still to come. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, guys.